back when the the triangle thing happened, and everyone started talking about the triangle, uh, I did see a lot of people not being sure, like, why that even remotely mattered. Like, it's a triangle. It, it, what What's the big deal about a triangle? Well, the big deal is that it actually worked right now, um, because uh, if you can render anything at all, that means, like, the entire framework to get to the rendering is working to the point where it can actually render something. Mm -hmm. And, like, most of the complexity in uh, in modern GPUs doesn't really have anything to do with the actual, like, you know, triangular thing that's on the screen. It's just, you know, like a dozen layers below that that are the same, no matter you have one triangle or, you know, 27 or 2 million. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, it did... Uh, I... What was I saying? Um, it's been sort of interesting to see it come along from that point. Like, I I am not someone who has, like, a deep understanding about, like, GPU drive development. So seeing it sort of evolve as it has been, it, it's been really impressive to see from my side. But has it been going, you know, as smoothly as you expected from that point? Or has there been any extra hiccups that have happened, like, since then? Or how's it going? I mean, there's always uh, hiccups because it's reverse engineering, right? So there's always going to be weird things. Um, one thing that happened last week was that um, I was supposed to do the uh, rendering myself on the, on the GPU thing. Mm -hmm. And I got nerd sniped by Alyssa running into an issue with uh, MIP maps um, because uh, AFCD uses MIP maps. Yes, so I'm slightly at fault there. Did a test <laughs> render and like everything was fine except my lower lip was completely messed up. And... Uh, and it turns out there was like a weird formula to calculate the uh, memory layout of mipmaps and nobody knew what it was. And so, we're, you know, we're like, input, output, what's the algorithm, right? And I spent a whole, like, 10-hour stream trying to work this out, did not get it. Mm -hmm. Got pretty close, though. And then the next day on Google, who's one of the folks that was uh, helping out with that, like, cracked it. And then I was like, ah, that's what it was. But you know what's the funniest part? Is that the next day when I actually did the stream and I rendered myself, I just turned off mid maps because it was taking too long to generate. <laughs> like they work fine, and I could see they were gonna work fine, but I'm just like, okay, I have a different problem now. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, just gonna turn maps off. Yeah, generating the mid maps was like making it run out of memory as well, which is funny. Well, it's because I don't free any memory. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, it's fine temporarily. It's a it's prototype. Just... <laughs> Look, as long as you uh, don't you don't leave it running for too long, it doesn't matter if you don't free up memory. It's a program. That, that, the that's is, the... look, that, that, that code base was literally like, start the program, render a triangle, shut down the program, right? You don't yeah, care yeah. about freeing memory. And then the next stream, uh, I did like, you know, the, the bunny thing. Yeah. And, I, and I literally was like, okay, I did one frame. Is it going to do multiple frames? I did not expect multiple frames to work. And I tried, and I, it was like rendering multiple frames. It's like, wait, what? Um, wait, that was that wasn't the bunny. That was the cube. That was when I got to the cube. Yep, yep. Um, and 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 so then, of course, it's like, well, you're doing multiple frames now. You probably should be freeing memory, but. <laughs> Yeah, just writing it like the decompiler does stuff. The decompiler is also only free memory when absolutely necessary trademark, which means that like getting LLVM to work with D is just like, ah, D is now using 16 gigabytes of RAM. <laughs> but well, Where does the... Which, uh, the... Uh, uh, sorry? Ah, it's just like, a, because I also sometimes delve into compile development, so I made mm. my own program language with LLVM, and yeah, I wrote it in D, and I'm just like, I was running into issues where it was just like, run for like, two hours, uh, and like, just use all the memory until it crashed, so. <laughs> they did fix that later, but, uh, yeah. So, I know you've been doing a lot of stuff with using, well, using the M1 as an eGPU, because the, I guess... Well, explain why you've been doing that anyway. I mean, it's it's kind of a joke, right? Like, I mean, I've been using it um, as a development platform in a particular way, mm -hmm. and then I realized that like technically that qualifies as an GPU, <laughs> and so I just sort of made the joke, you know, um, like, because it's funny because the M1 can't use eGPUs, but mm -hmm. I made the M1 into an eGPU. <laughs> but um, no, so the thing is that um, when we do this reverse engineering stuff, this is what I talked about with the tooling, right? Mm -hmm. Um. Instead of uh, like running software on the actual machine you're targeting, like locally, which very often means you're you know like doing compile test cycles that you have to keep like rebooting and putting software into it and like you know copying some files over and all that. Um, 
So what we actually do is that we have a proxy that runs on the M1, bare metal, like there's no OS. Yep. Um, and that just exposes a USB mm. device because the M1 has a USB device uh, mod. Yep. Um, and so you just plug it into another computer. And so that's basically a, a very dumb interface on that that can let you like read memory, write memory, you know, send commands and stuff like that. And then um, we have a Python shell um, and a Python framework um, that you can run on the host side. And, and we sort of prototype everything there. Uh, and right. the thing is, because it's Python, it's a lot easier to mess around and prototype and script and make experiments. Um, and, um, you know, it feels, it kind of feels wrong if you're used to writing drivers and see. But then you realize that, you know, it makes a lot of sense because you're running on a development machine and, mm -hmm. and you're just um, testing, um, you know, remotely. And the reboot cycle when you actually need to reboot, which is not um, that often. Well, actually for the GPI, I reboot every time because um, the firmware reset requires that. But most of the time when you're messing with hardware, it's like you have an interactive shell, right? You can literally just type, you know, commands and read and write RAM and, and uh, you know, try things multiple times. And it's super, super fast. Um, and so that's why it's, you know, quote, an EGPU. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like my okay. entire, um, you know, the, everything is running on my development machine and then just sort of puppeteering the M1 over USB. That's right. also why it has to be so slow because it has to, off, like, upload all the project buffers every frame over USB 2.0. Right, 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 right. That makes sense. Because <laughs> I feel like 0.5 FPS will, like, well, yes, it's supposed to be that slow. <laughs> so if it was actually, like, running properly on the machine and not just, you know, passing everything over... USB 2.0, it would be in a state where it's actually like running, obviously not, you know, as optimized as it possibly could be, but in a reasonable state. I mean, it literally is spending all the time copying vertex buffers now. Yeah. Um, and if you do the GLMark2 with Python over USB, I actually get like 15 FPS, even with that mess, and it's still uploading commands and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I have no doubt that Sorry, that if I literally run, if I had a way of running the same code base locally, mm -hmm. 30 FPS, definitely, um, yep. even with Python, because there's no reason why it wouldn't be that fast. Yeah. Even 60, I don't know. Um, Actually quite possible, so. <laughs> so where does the, the project go now? You've got it working. So what's the next step? Um. So the next step is that um, it's not, it's kind of working in the sense that we are rendering single frames in sequence. Yeah. Um, from a single app, so there's no multitasking. Um, there's no um, you know, like uh, I don't free memory. I know how to free memory, but um, it, part of the reason why I don't free memory is that I don't know when the GPU stops using some pieces of memory. So that's important. Right. Um, right. and so the thing is, um, there's sort of different paths you can take from here, right? Like I could start writing a real kernel driver and get it, you know, working to the point where it is working right now on the real machine. Um, but the thing is, for it to work well, we still need to understand more things, right? Mm -hmm. um, so in the way I think about it is that it's worth spending more time with the Python, you know, cursed stack, um, understanding things like multitasking, uh, like parallelism, um, you know, having multiple apps rendering at the same time, and just sort of prototype all that and, um, and understand how you're supposed to do that on the GPU, because it means that then when everything makes sense, it's almost literally taking the Python driver and rewriting it in C. I mean, not mm -hmm. literally, but it's kind of close yeah. to that, right? And once you understand the hardware, it's a lot easier to write code that actually does what you expect it to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, so my plan right now is actually for the next stream, which is tomorrow, by the way, um, I'm going to be um, doing like some snooping on the memory as it's being written by the GPU so that I can understand um, little details like when a render is finished, how the flags get set, how do I know that, you know, that it's actually done? How do I tell the GPU that these things have to happen in sequence and not at the same time? What happens if I do two renders at once and two different threads? What happens if I make a very slow render and then I want to interrupt it and like preempt it with another render? Like, I don't know anything about that, right? Yeah. So the next steps are going to be all about working that out. And once more of that makes sense, uh, then I would like to start writing the uh, real driver. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you've got a, a lot of work still ahead of you. Yeah, there's this a part of it. Um, but, you know, it's been moving pretty quickly, so I'm pretty sure that, you know, we're going to have a, at a, you know, it, at a point where you can render a desktop um, sometime this year. Mm -hmm. What about très moi? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God.
Just oh, referencing that, that like. Yeah, this person made an amazing like spoof subtitle video, and it was I, I, and I said in the video that it was going to be done in three months. <laughs> and Ariel was just like, and, and like surprise. Someone on Ferronix already said like quoted that as like an official. <laughs> well, so like, like, just like, I don't know I'll why. Try, but like, I never said that. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why anyone would take like. Uh, edited version of Asterix and Obelix uh, mission Cleopatra as like <laughs> gospel. <laughs> I, I've I've watched the movie. The movie is also great. <laughs> uh, what are, one thing I wanted to ask you about is a lot of people have been. I have no idea about this. I don't. I doubt you have much of an idea at this point. But I've seen a lot of people asking like what. It's really going to happen, you know, with the M2 systems that are coming out soon. Like, is this going to be something completely different? Is it going to be an iteration where, you know, supporting that as well as isn't going to be as, like, as crazy of a jumper starting from nothing? Like, do you have anything that you might, you know, think about it at this stage? Um, it's going to be um, incremental because it always is incremental. Um, mm-hmm. And if you need proof of that, um, some folks just got um, the Linux kernel running on, like, I think it was like an A9 or something, like a, a relatively older Apple um, sock um, on iPads. Mm-hmm. And it's like using all the SIE drivers with minor changes. Um, so there's mm-hmm. going to be um, new things to add. There's going to be things that Apple changes. But they're, they never start from scratch, and yeah. they're actually one of the companies that take that most seriously because they realize that, you know, it's a waste of time to start from scratch. Mm-hmm. Um, um, so, like, you know, when they have major DBU, um, like, um, generation changes, that's that's going to need a, a lot more reverse engineering of, like, you know, if the shader changed and things like that, um, the shader cores changed. But still, you're still going to have the same... Um, design, right? Yeah. You have the same concepts. The firmware is probably going to be, um, you know, basically using the same architecture. So it's a very, very different thing from starting from scratch. Because, like, the thing you spend the most time on is not literally, you know, like, what numbers mean, but, like, what the design, what the intent of the person designing, you know, those structures and those um, instruction sets and all that was, right? So once you have that, it's very, very rare that it's going to be, like, complete from scratch, like, nothing to do with it. That, that, that basically never happens. So, yeah, I, I don't expect it to be, um, you know, like, um, as nowhere takes as much time as, as the M1 is taking. So it's also, not going like, to be like, you know, like, uh, sorry. I was just going to say, isn't like the M2 Mac Pro out now? So I, I, I'm pretty sure Mark Ken is gonna, just going to get that, like, bootstrap pretty Probably. quickly, too. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, um, I can. Yeah, we should be finding out pretty soon, I guess. Um, so, um, I I don't know what. Um, I mean, I guess I, Alyssa's gonna have to look at the um, make the site probably first. Um, and I'll I'll poke around if I can get my hands on one mm-hmm. on the uh, kernel side. Um, but uh, but you know, they sort of depend on each other, so yeah, it kind of yeah. Because there, there was a lot of people that were sort of worried about it, but that sounds like it's in a much better state. That oh, much much more iterative state, a much less of a, you know, disaster situation, like, you know, going from x86 to ARM, like a completely different paradigm. Um, it sounds like and then, uh, it's something that can actually reasonably be worked on. Yeah, yeah, and there's always, like, you know, you know the Apple things, um, like, you know, how the boot process works and all that, like, oh, that's all worked out, right? And they're not going to change that. Mm-hmm. Um, to give you an idea, I, I was looking at the uh, IRC channel and the... Uh, the and people already can see the device trees, right? And like what the hardware is supposed to look like from a software perspective. Um, and it looks like this time the sort of, you know, random new thing is the keyboard and the mouse um, controller got, like touchpad and keyboard controller got integrated into the M2. So the interface for that changed. So like, you know, it's probably going to be like, well, they, you know, we get the core drivers working and then the keyboard and the track are going to be a new driver, right? right? That's kind of the level that you expect when this kind of uh, generational change. 